Good morning. Uh, this morning we need to talk about something that uh, we don't encounter often, but when we do encounter it, we do want to know uh, how to approach this situation and how to handle the circumstance. Uh, this morning's discussion is about bloodborne pathogens and helping an injured person. Uh, what is a bloodborne pathogen? Uh, bloodborne pathogens are uh, microorganisms. They're normally carried in infected blood and uh, other bodily fluids. They can cause diseases. Some of the diseases will be fatal, uh, such as hepatitis B or hepatitis C, uh, as well as HIV. Bloodborne pathogens must find a direct route of entry into the body for the infection to be possible. Uh, bodily fluids can also splash into the eyes and cause infection. An exchange of these bodily fluids must be direct. Uh, thus, you cannot really contract a bloodborne pathogen disease uh, if an infected person merely touches you or even uh, sneezes or coughs on you. Our situation is such that uh, we do have opportunity from time to time to come into contact with a bloodborne pathogen. Uh, and when we would do that would be when we would be attempting to uh, assist an injured worker who's bleeding. So here are some things to remember. Uh, when you're responding to an injury, if an injury ha if a, a co-worker has a minor injury, and I emphasize the word minor there, uh, that can cause bleeding, try to have uh, the victim bandage uh, his or her own wound. If the injury is serious, then call the emergency response team. However, if you don't have time to wait for the emergency response team, uh, make sure that you yourself take precautions when you're dealing with uh, blood or any kind of other uh, bodily fluid. Uh, you need to cover your hands with rubber gloves. Now, in each of our foreman's trucks, uh, there is a bloodborne pathogen kit. In that kit are uh, rubber gloves. So before you treat someone who is bleeding, get the bloodborne pathogen kit, uh, pull the gloves out, put the gloves on, and then handle uh, what you have to handle in order to assist the individual who's bleeding. Uh, remember, vomit, burns, and abrasions, and external and internal injuries can release bodily fluids. So it's not just blood. There's other fluids that are potentially infectious uh, materials. So then, when you have your gloves on and you've got done treating uh, the individual and tried to stop the blood flow or do whatever you have to do from a perspective of first aid, when you get ready to take the gloves off, uh, take one glove off, wad it up, put it in the palm of the hand, uh, the other hand that still has the glove on it, then take two fingers, Stick the two fingers down the cuff of the other glove, pick it, pull it up, and without touching the outside of it, roll it over top uh, of the first glove that you're holding in the palm of your hand. Uh, then dispose of it in a biohazard bag. Wash your hands immediately with soap and water after uh, you've been exposed to any kind of uh, bodily fluids, even with your gloves on. And then if you've been exposed to a victim's bodily fluid, wash the affected area uh, with soap and water. Uh, contact a medical professional, report the incident to your employer, or further action should that be appropriate. Uh, these are just some basic uh, precautions that you need to take if you're trying to help a co-worker who's been injured uh, so that you can, in the process, protect yourself. Thank you for your time. Uh, we will talk again, I'm sure, all being well. Thank you.